Hello and welcome to another video. This will be another Boogie 298 reaction. Looks like he uploaded today after all. This one is called Best Games of 2023 I've Played So Far. So let's see what happens in this video. Much on this channel anymore, but I just wanted to make a video talking about how 2023 is one of the best years for gaming, period. And look, even if you're not much of a gamer and you don't yet own like a PlayStation 5 or a Nintendo Switch or a, 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 a Xbox, I, I think now is a good time to get one because this generation is, mm, oh, it's so good right now. Take a look at the games that have come out so far this year. And hey, not every game is for everybody, but chances are there's at least two or three games on this list that are going to be for you. And I'm going to talk about the games that stood out for me. Breath of the Wild was my favorite game of all time when it came out, and it's held that slot for a while. I often say Pac-Man, I often say EverQuest, but the reality of it is the Breath of the Wild felt like the original Legend of Zelda did when I popped it into a system back in 1988, or however long ago that was. Tears of the Kingdom, I did not expect to live up to those expectations. I didn't think it could do so much more that I would warrant it as the better game, but it adds so much more. It's got the base map that you already played on with some alterations to it, like new shrines and new dungeons, but then you got the underworld map, then you've got the sky map and a new story and so many more side quests and so much more stuff to do. I put 100 hours into this and I do not regret a single second of it. It's too early for me to call it my favorite game of all time, but I'm fairly certain it will probably reach that point at some point i try to let it bake for a little while but 100 hours well spent and i know this is a game that i will go back and play again and again the same way i did uh, breath of the wild when it came out just an excellent game and i think this is a switch seller uh, even if you only bought a switch for just this one game if you got your switch used somewhere cheap I, I don't think you would be wasting your money it's just that good uh, what, uh probably my game of the year whenever i buy a fighting game I almost always feel ripped off if there's not a I like that you said another gaming video and these games I'll consider, especially the on the Xbox side, because I'm getting an Xbox in a couple of months. Bunch of bonus modes, like story modes and arcade modes and, and silly modes and uh, you know, Street Fighter 6 has all of that. Uh, not only is it a polished, fun fighter that a casual like me can pick up and play, uh, not only does it look gorgeous, not only is it fun to fight my friends on Saturdays when they come over, uh, but the online mode, the character creation mode, the story mode, all of that was there, and I think it was probably well worth the asking price. Now, I do know Mortal Kombat 1 is coming out later this year, and I'm more of a Mortal Kombat fan than I am a Street Fighter fan. However... Uh, Street Fighter 6 was a great pickup and it's such a huge improvement from 5 It just shows me that Capcom actually cares about this series and it's not a series I ever want to see die It's nice to check in with Chun-Li and Ken and Ryu and see what's going on with the gang every few years and uh, The storyline this time is just weird. Did you know Ken lost all of his money in the storyline? Uh, due to NFTs. That's a thing. Look it up. I, modern Street Fighter, it's there for you, and it's definitely worth it. Hogwarts Legacy is w one of my friend's favorite games, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. It just didn't grip me. I picked it up, and it's clearly an incredible game. In just the first few hours, I explored Hogwarts, saw some incredible voice acting, saw some uh, incredible level design, uh, explored Hogwarts, played so many games, and realized that this is the Harry Potter equivalent of the Red Dead Redemption to some degree just couldn't grip me for whatever reason i don't know if it's the i was playing some casual game at the time maybe it's just because i'm an old man and i didn't grow up on harry potter hard to say but this game just wasn't for me that said it was pretty clearly made with love and you got to respect that so it's on the list diablo 4 is another game i put like 100 hours into and i still can't recommend this game when it came out it was in an excellent state and i loved every second of it playing with my roommates playing with my friends I, I enjoyed this game so much and then with the new season a ridiculous number of nerf fixes and 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 bug changes and all this stuff made the game basically unfun to play so at the current state diablo 4 is probably to other things I almost wonder if it's incompetence at Blizzard that made them do this or if they're purposely trying to tank the game. Like, I, I, I don't know how they could have made the decisions they made to destroy Diablo 4 in the way that they did so quickly all at once, specifically when it was so good when it came out and everybody was so invested in this game. But 
That 100 hours I spent playing it right after it came out, I wouldn't take it back for the world. I'm glad I got to experience a Diablo that, if you bought this game today, you'll never get to play. And that's a real shame. Mark my words, Baldur's Gate 3 has a very real chance of winning Game of the Year this year at the Game Awards. And it probably deserves it. However, it's such a weird edge case. Because this game is not for everybody. I do not recommend it. If you don't like tactical games or you don't like RPGs, you probably won't like this game. And if you're unfamiliar with Dungeons and Dragons, you're really getting thrown in on the deep, deep end, trying to figure out these deep systems and all of this unusual stuff. I fear for the casual player who picks this game up. That said, if you can figure it out, there is incredible character design, a character creation system, the Dungeons and Dragons system that I've loved for the last 30 some years. Uh, game design, storytelling, uh, the graphics are beautiful. The gameplay is, I, it's, it's just an excellent game. I'm surprised it's gotten the attention that it has because it's just not for the casual players or for everybody. I figured it would just be a niche product for the people who love these types of really deep RPGs. But here we are, this Dungeons & Dragons renaissance, regardless of what the company that makes Dungeons & Dragons is trying to do to that game. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Been playing it on my Steam Deck, even live streaming it on Twitch, and I'm really glad I've been doing it. I love the Final Fantasy series. I loved the first one. I loved 7 just as much as I've loved almost any video game, and 15 was incredible. That said, 16 just entirely failed to grip me for whatever reason. Uh, played through the demo, bought the game, and that game basically sits there on my hard drive not doing much of anything. And again, I think it's because it's a bit more of an action RPG, even more than 15 was. It's good. There's nothing wrong with the game. It's just not exactly what I was ex For me, my favorite is Final Fantasy 14. Hope I can get my mind put in, but 14 it has to be my favorite game. So acting. But that said, it reviewed extremely well. I do know that eventually I will dig into this game and I hope that I will love it when the time comes. But it was a bit of a departure of the way. It turned out to be a very divisive game. Either people love it or they hate it. It just feels so weird to me that I don't feel much of anything when I was playing it. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'll get a chance to dig back into it and, and figure out whether I love or hate it like the rest of the internet. And you know, those are the games that have really stood out to me so far this year. But there's so many other games that have come out, and there's so many games left to come out this year. I mean, we've still got Spider-Man 2, for God's sakes, to come out. What an incredible year for gaming it's been so far and the year's not even over i'm finally enjoying video games enough to talk about them here on this channel again and i hope that you're enjoying them too these latest generation of consoles are earning their keep even though you can play most of these games on the previous generation as well but those games that were delayed during the whole covid thing it feels like they finally came out and they have this extra layer of polish and just in just maybe i'm happier but maybe video games are making me happier again. I don't know what it is, but I will say at the end of the day, I'm having a great time, and I hope you are too. As always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon. Nice. That's a pretty good video. And a few of the games he talked about I recognize, and some random environment to Diablo 4, even though I don't have it, but still. I want to try to get some of these games, but right now the goal is to get an Xbox One right now. And then I'll worry about whatever afterwards. But, um, yeah. Um, good video on Buggy for making this. I didn't expect Buggy to upload today, but he did anyway, so... Buggy reaction. There we go. So, anyways, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Stay tuned for the next one.